Jeff, as you know, has been the organizer of the uh, Chester County Art Tour. He's been the organizer of the Montgomery County Art Tour. And he's an amazing artist by himself, working in multiple media. You, you can see some of his work behind him. So, Jeff, let me turn it over to you. Holy cow. Okay. Thank you very much for having me. Um, uh, hopefully more people will show up. But if not, I intend to entertain you. So uh, grab a cocktail, your favorite beverage, and uh, sit back and enjoy the show. And if you have any questions, just blurt them out. Unmute yourself. We're a small group. So uh, feel free to ask any questions, and uh, I'll happy to answer them. So I'm going to share my screen, and we are good. All right. So uh, Don told me I had three hours to talk about my career and what I was going to do. So hopefully I'll, I'll, I'll fill all three hours for you, right? <laughs> <laughs> so um, everybody uh, always asks me, you know, what's the secret formula? You know, what, what gallery do I need? What show do I need to be into? What, what do I have to do to become successful? And there really is no secret formula. And success is defined by a bunch of different people. So figure out what your success is and work towards that. Take small steps, small steps, do good work. Credit, doing good work and being consistent is incredibly hard. And again, you have to share it with people. If your work is not out there, Nobody's going to know what a genius you are. <clears throat> a lot of times you're just kind of like a genius in your own studio. And uh, then all of a sudden you put it out there and you're like, oh, that's where that painting was weak or whatever, you know, whatever art medium you're in. Um, or sometimes you just take it out of the gallery, your studio setting and put it into a gallery and be like, ooh, yep, that, that piece was weak. Put yourself up on the internet. Um, Put yourself up on Facebook, Instagram. And uh, if your mother's your friend on Instagram or Facebook, she will definitely tell you if it's a bad piece or not. Because I put up a piece once and my mom was like, oh, yeah, that, that, that's not one of your best work. And I'm like, mom, it was a commission. I already sold it. You know, <laughs> come on. So I had to delete her, uh, her comment. But other than that, put it up there. Get your work out there. And... Uh, you just got to get it out there and do good work. So here I am, like we said, I got three hours to talk about myself. So here I am at the age of five and I always knew I wanted to be a painter. Um, there was no doubt about it. I suck at English. I suck at math. I suck at science and social studies. So <laughs> for going through um, school um, for, so I wouldn't get my butt kicked in high school, I would paint the uh the kids jean jacket so they could go out into the smoking lounge you know iron maiden zz top on the back of the jean jackets um i lived out in the country and i painted mailboxes i just put the names on their mailbox a dollar a dollar a letter and five dollars if they wanted a butterfly or a um you know a flower or something like that so my parents name my my parents got remained uh, married so their last name was Waskowitz so right there I made like 20 bucks right off our paint in our own mailbox so right there I'm like okay I can make money and I can paint I'm pretty good at this so I grew up in Ellington Connecticut which is a small panhandle up in Ellington you can see it over there on a we grew up with two cows to every one person uh, my nearest neighbor was a half a mile away and uh, I grew up out in the country. I went to school at Arcadia University, and I grew up with cows. I never went cow tipping, um, but here's some interesting facts on cows, just in case you learn nothing through this whole presentation about my art career. At least you'll know something about cows, and they're pretty fascinating animals. You know, you actually you can, walk, you can walk them up the stairs, but they can't come down. If you all watched Animal House, you'll know that, too, as they led the cow up until the top of the school, and uh, it wasn't going to come down. Here's some facts about cows. 
like I said, I went to Arcadia University. I went as a science illustration major. Sophomore year, I saw organic chemistry, and the book was about eight inches tall. I realized I liked vodka and partying a lot more than I liked organic chemistry. So I switched my major to graphic design. After graphic design, I wanted to do painting. And my graphic design professor actually said, you will not make it as a painter, stick with graphic design. It's a sweet, bitter ending story because my first show after I graduated from college, my uh, graphics professor came and bought one of my first paintings. And now I actually still communicate with him. And I I'm not gonna mention his name because some of you might know him. But um, we talk about the studio tour and talk about, you know, going back to Arcadia University and doing some, uh, some talking and stuff like that. So that was my short um, career in college. I was going to go to um, graduate school, but then I looked at the prerequisites for graduate school and it said you had to have your own gallery show. And I thought, wow, I can save myself, you know, what, 30 $12,000 a year. Now nah, that I could save myself basically $60,000 if I went out and found my own gallery. So that's what I did. I actually went out and uh, started a co-op gallery and saved myself $40,000. Here's a background of my senior thesis. I was in college and um, from, from trying to stop myself from navel gazing and thinking of how great you know, expounding on the art world I'm going to be, I decided that I was going to paint my arms and the food that was in front of me and make a mark. I really love the idea about capturing a mark, capturing time, and how do you take that mark and condense it all in time so it's one painting. For me, it was kind of mind-blowing. It was um, abstract expression. Yves Klein kind of did it with his blue paint. Um, Bassini did it. So I wrote a whole thesis on this, and I did these paintings that are four feet by eight feet. And the idea was just to make a mark and capture that mark. So I did dinner, sleep, party, and love. You know, everything that you do in college and basically your college experience, I captured on a, a four foot by eight foot canvas. And then I recorded the whole thing, too. So while you were in the gallery, I spliced up all of the conversations and played those in the room. So one of the reasons I did like life lessons and in college was because my sister um, at the age of 16 died in a car accident. This is my freshman year in college, going into my senior year in college. So let's say I had a lot of therapy and I had to get through a lot of this stuff through my artwork. Hmm. Um, it, was, it was a great time to express your feelings in art. After that, that last piece I did back there was um, Are You My Exploitation? And I always had kind of had this thing of like, Oh, hey, my sister died, you know, woe is me. And I did that piece. And I said to myself, I have to stop using this sorrow as a crutch to define my artwork. And from that day on, seven, well, more than seven years later, what am I, 20, 30 years later, I decided to make only happy paintings and to appreciate life, live life, show life through color, imagery and pop art i end up painting with wax and pigment which is encaustic painting which is my next slide it should be i love the idea of um encaustic because it goes back to what i was doing in college it captures that mark wax dries instantly it dries within like three seconds. Have any of you done encaustic? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, it dries really quick. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you have to go back in with <laughs> the, um, blow torch, melt it and build up your layers. So basically wax, it's wax with natural pigment 
It was um, made in the 5th century BC. The piece that you see right here is the Fayum portrait, which is 5th century BC, and that is in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. So I, I, lo I loved wax. Nobody was doing it. Well, not many people were doing this. Joanne Matera just wrote the um, Bible for encaustic. <clears throat> um, R and F encaustic, which is up in Kingston, New York. I took their first class. I saw it advertised in the the help want the art newspaper or something like that. I was like, oh, learning caustic. So I was like, I'm doing this. I gotta go up and see what this is all about and see if I'm doing it right. Because basically I was doing it in my apartment. Thankfully, it was a rental apartment. And uh I had a Pyrex um like brownie pan with water in it with muffin tins on top of it. And I would boil the water on top of the stove and that would melt my wax. There was, you know, there's not, there nothing to tell you how to do this. Some people are using hot plates um, and double boilers. This is kind of how Jasper Johns did it. I saw some of his um, pieces and some pictures of him doing it. So I had the wax in the muff in the muffin tins inside a brownie pan filled with water which created a let's say a vapor barrier that when the water boiled and the air had nowhere to escape it just blew up and went all over the place so now i had wax and muffin tins and water all over my rental apartment Let's just say I did not get my security deposit back. I have. <laughs> but I ended up in my own studio. And, oh, come on. Next. Next slide. And became a pop artist. I think everybody likes to go, you know, what kind of art do you do? I say it's pop art. Pop art. And my influences were Andy Warhol, Jasper Johns, who's another encaustic artist, and Robert Rauschenberg are probably my, my biggest influences back in college. Now I'm kind of big on to uh, John Singer Sargent, Sigmar Polk, and I love Damien Hurst marketing, uh, Ashley Longshore on Instagram I follow, but... This is what really inspired me through um, college and Keith Haring was a big influence. So if you didn't learn enough about cows, you can learn enough about pop art. It actually started in London in the 1950s. And while I was studying over there, I got to go see the pop show um, with Richard Hamilton kind of started the whole thing. Um, it was a great show, very inspirational. And then, what, back in early 2000s, they had the pop show at the Philadelphia Art Museum where it talked about the international pop show and where pop art was happening all around the world during the 50s and 60s. So I grew a lot of inspiration from that. Oh, I know why it's not doing that. You have to, you have to admit uh, somebody in the waiting room. Done. Done. And then I can forward it. There we go. This this is my first encaustic painting. It was basically everything you could do wrong with encaustic painting. I painted it on canvas, which is a no no. I primed the um, canvas with gesso and then put spray paint on top of it, which is another huge no-no. Um, with encaustic, you wanna use a board and you wanna go on a gesso non-plastic um, uh, background to do it with. Here's another one, again, inspired by the movies and uh, the, the fascination of making money with comic heroes. It was a Spider-Man piece in 1998. Uh, this is my first show at the Bodice Gallery in Westchester. And these were a couple of my encaustic paintings. I was silk screening also 
You can see the astronauts in silver back there is a silk screen, uh, mixing it with encaustic. Um, again, I was experimenting with the latex and the wax. You can do the latex as the final um, adhere, uh, the final step for encaustic. You can't put encaustic over a plastic pigment. Again, with the brush strokes, I was painting on the background and then scraping it off with a razor. You can see up on top that the drips are coming down as the wax would dry. This is a great way for me to capture that movement that I was trying to capture in high school, I mean in college, through encaustic painting. These sides are 24 by 24. Um, this was another, another piece, a lot of drips, a lot of um, layering on. I would start with an image and then add something to it and then add something to it. And hopefully the composition would come out right. Uh, if it didn't, I would always toss it into the fire. Encaustic really burns really well when you have an out big outdoor bonfire. And humor. I love to add humor and uh, polka dots into my stuff. So this is simply called chicken dance. You got the <laughs> chickens on one side and dancing on the other side. Uh, just really keeping it simple. And I had a couple of simple rules for myself. <laughs> it was square, add dots, and add a word. Um, <laughs> and then I basically got it out there from a gallery in Philadelphia, subculture gallery, to Westchester. And I did the Immaculata show. I did Yellow Springs. Um, and I'll go into that a little bit early, later on how to build a career. But first, I had, to, I had to figure out, like, where I'm going. I'm all over the board. I have the attention span of a gnat. Um, I speak a mile a minute, and uh, I need to slow down myself. I had to go, okay, what, what makes my work me? And how do I categorize it? And I found out that I work in series. Um, I have constraints. Like I said, I do a square. It was a square. Add a dot and add a word to it in an image. And from there, I see these as challenges where some people might see them as restrictions. Um, I so want to do clay. I so want to do welding. But I know that I can't because I'm a painter. And, I re and this is what the galleries are looking for. They're looking for my paintings. So as much as I want to do that, I don't. So the first show, the second show actually I did in Westchester had Chinese themes to it. So I take my images, I crop them, I use bold, bright colors, mixing an encaustic with silk screening and a little bit of oil stick on the top. Uh, this was a uh, wash and wear with the double happiness um, logo up on top and the star. I don't know why I can't go forward. Hmm. I can only talk about this piece for so long. Uh, here's the next one. This was Joy. Uh, again, playing with the use of words and type the Buddha representing joy and that lady up on top could be the sunglasses and her name could be joy. Um, I took the words being a graphic designer back in college. I love type. I love the idea of graphic design. Uh, I did have this work. I don't know if it's just too. Um, Maybe should we go this way instead of a full screen? Like, huge influence is Jasper Johns. Um, Jasper Johns. of how many. 
and oh my internet's unstable. Um, then Duchamp came out and said that words are plastic. You know, we have all these different languages and words are just letters that are put together to form a vocabulary. And then all of a sudden you have these letters. And I said, oh, if I turn letters into images, I can have my own vocabulary. So my letters became dots, Chinese symbols, color, squares, and pop art. Here's another one that I did, 2002. Again, it has the dots, it has the imagery, and it has a word. Wow, this is really bad. I'm just gonna go through with these. Can you see these still? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, okay. So with all, all these rules that I did make, of course, what do you have to do? They're great. You have to break your own rules just to keep the fun up. So this is a piece that I did. And as an artist, you can tell, like, there's those couple of pieces that you have that are, like, brown, groundbreaking, but only to you. And this is one of the pieces. This had dots, but it didn't have a word. And I was like, oh, amazing. And uh, I called this one um, speechless because it didn't have a word to it. Hmm. Then I went into a series called, I had, after I do the series, I had to figure out what the hell to call it. So I called this one basically beauty. It's um, the love of like advertising, seeing glamour shots, beautiful women, Photoshop, ring lighting, and going back to home and using my wife as one of my models. And this is a picture of her and this piece. What inspired me to do this was my um, gallery dealer in um, Switzerland. And if you can find a gallery that can help you with your career and direct you and sell your pieces, it's a godsend. Um, Isabel, I sent her a couple of pieces. I was experimenting with some doing some vintage type of 1950s pinup girls, just learning learning how to draw the body and draw the person to figure. And I sent them to her. She sold three of them within two weeks. And she's like, hey, I think we're on to something. Everybody loves the encaustic. And I've been showing with her for the past 15 years. And as you can tell by the red dots, she was the smarter one out of the two of us. So she kept me inspired and always pushing me um, to paint better, to paint more difficult things. As you can see further into my career, she started painting, um, having me paint more difficult things, painting water, painting ice. This is a piece that I did for her show. This is an interesting piece because she actually bought this. Like when a gallery owner buys one of your pieces, you're like, hot damn, that's awesome. So she was actually in a show, an art show in Basel and owned this piece, saw this piece in a gallery and approached the gallery and was like, where did you get this piece? And the gallery owner was like, oh, it's a Jeff Shaler. And she's like, I know what it is. And she talked to him. She's like, I represent him and I own that piece. Where did you get it? The piece was actually an oil painting. Come to find out, he was having them made in China and they were doing oil paints out of them. Oh. They were paying 50 bucks for somebody in China to paint them and sell them for two grand. Sheesh. Like, Sweet. If I can get somebody in China to paint my paintings for 50 bucks, I'm all in. But she gave them a cease and desist and they stopped painting my stuff. <laughs> oh, wow. Right. Here is one. This is a. Um, playing with black on black um, and it actually had some dots in it. Just playing with the idea of silk screening and the textures of black paint. It's called Candy. Um, she's from a 1960s movie. The play on words between is she drinking candy, which is a martini, and the word candy. This piece is uh, Queen of Hearts. This is my wife 
Um, I photographed her kind of playing homage to the um, James Dean piece where he's lifting the, um, the turtleneck over his head. And then I got the Q up in the top and red and the Q up in, in the bottom in white, Queen of Hearts. Uh, this is a fascinating piece too because – so I've been showing in Switzerland. This is my fourth show every other year. And they do things differently over there. They they cover up the window so you can't see in. And I'm like, well, what, what, what are we doing that for? You know, all artists like to have a pre-sale, a couple of red dots on the wall. And she's like, no, no, no. In Switzerland, we open up a gallery and we open at five o'clock Swiss time. You know, everybody's got their watches. The only way you can come and see the artwork before the gallery opens is if you come from out of the country. So a couple flew in from Belgium and actually previewed the show and bought this piece before the, uh, the beginning of the show. So I'm like, wow, that was pretty cool. But of course, Belgium's only like, you know, North Carolina away from Switzerland, but it seemed impressive. Um, then I started focusing. I love the idea of hair and with encaustic, if you can just drag your brush from top to bottom, that's about as much time as you have before the wax dries. So there's a confidence and a spontaneity that goes all along with the um, encaustic painting because you have to paint quickly and you have to know where your mar uh, mark is going to go. Here's some more from that series, blending. Um, then I got in love with bubbles and I... Kind, they kind of died down 2008. I just started painting bubbles again, so 15 years later. Uh, also, what I liked about the wax was that it, when you melted it, it blended in and distorted and became a whole beautiful little abstract in itself. So then I started doing these little abstracts. Basically, they're close-ups of American things, chocolate and you fall in love, well, I do, hopefully you do too, in love with the chocolate and using wax to make chocolate and how chocolate has the reflections and stuff. Fell in love with fruit and just close-ups of all these little things, the dripping of water coming off a bottle of champagne, the yellow of Vive Coco, which is a great yellow, um, the blacks, the fuzziness of olives in a drink and then round one again letting letting the wax just drip and showing that the stroke from the end started from the bottom and went up those small little details uh that i loved in wax my the gallery owner isabel you know encouraged me to start painting glass and start painting things with reflections and started painting water droplets. I was like, Oh, all right. But it was good. Cause she, you know, when you're, when you're outside of college, you don't have that push. You tend to get, I tend speaking for myself, tend to get a little complacent and not want to push myself. And she was always there to push me. Um, falling in love with, the eyes and skin wax just leads itself to paint skin because wax is translu translucent skin is translucent and it just has this beauty to wax a beautiful uh sheen that you can shine it up this piece this piece is actually 48 by 72 which is big for an encaustic wow. just because of the drying time that it takes you to get from one side to the other side um lost in translation again pushing myself adding adding two figures and trying to figure out the composition to add two figures instead of one figure then uh this has killed me she she wanted me to do this stuff with the ipad and how, this is back in the early 2000s and the ipads had that blue glow that luminescent glow that came out of computer screens. And right now, you know, we have ring lights and stuff to help you with, uh, with casting. 
So she wanted me to do a whole show on this kind of glow. I also, at the same time, um, kind of found myself again. And we're now three kids into this um, marriage. And it was like, wow, we're a family. And this is a show that I put together at Westchester University called The Pursuit of Happiness. The walls were... Um, a burlap wall. I couldn't stand them. I hated it. So I put sheetrock up, spackled the sheetrock, and then painted the walls for the show. And uh, this was the installation piece I did. So it had my three kids. It had my wife down there giving birth. It says life, GE. We bring good things to life. And then over on the other side is my dog. So <laughs> look at a little perfect happy family, 3.5 kids with the dog. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that was luminous. This was an. Oh, this is another little piece that I did. Um, depending on what kind of screen you have, photo of my wife that I took by candlelight, and the back, the black over on the right hand side has black polka dots, and if you can see on her arm, I took this big bucket of black paint and just dropped it on the painting and let the splatters go all over the place. So it's black on black on black. And it, it's one of those things that just totally bring you into the painting and make you fall in love with encaustic painting. Uh, this was also part of the Luminous series. Internet is bad. Um, it was based on the, the Genesis day three, creating the coast day five, um, the earth, the birds and stuff and team, and then six breathing life into it. So I did these and then I got really, um, I don't know, maybe excited and had this new board that I made and these paintings are a full sheet of plywood. So they're four feet by eight feet, um, painted in acrylic paint. Uh, it was for the luminous show that I ended up doing and having all these paintings with some oil stick. So then I started painting it, playing around with oil stick, which is just a big fat crayon. Um, I drew this, the sheep in that, and then this one is the best for last. And I did these figures right here in oil stick. This is a five foot silk screen. And then I came back and hand painted all of these. So that was fun. Here is one of the pieces I did with the uh, luminosity coming up from below. And it's a blue light. The, of the iPad. This, this painting actually looks better in the dark. <laughs> you know, with all the lights off, this painting actually has a really cool, unique glow to it. Um, and it's a painting of my wife. I'm assuming nobody understands it because I still have it. So <laughs> I'm guessing it wasn't a hot seller. This is one of my daughter. Same thing with the iPad and the glow to it. Working with light, uh, this is a picture of my wife uh, outside smoking a cigar at night and taking the wax and just like melting it and then picking up the board and letting the wax move and create its own abstraction. So here I'm kind of playing a little bit with abstract and um, well, again, a word and uh, the human, a a non-abstract thing. Uh, this is a picture of the Pope that I did, um, referring back to um, all the luminous thing and the idea of dealing with light. After that, I decided that I was going to paint, again, referring back to um, my sister's passing, I was only going to paint things that were good. You know, there's a bunch of good and evil in the world. What's the best things and what's the positive role models I can put out there? 
And of course I had to play with the idea of good. So, you know, good dog. I had to do my dog. Superman. Superman's obviously a good guy. Another good guy is John Wayne. Oh. Babe Ruth. He was a good guy and he was a good bas- uh, baseball player. And then there's Sean Connery. <laughs> and of course, he, he's always the good guy. And then I threw stuff in there like um, the telephone company, double play on words, last call. You get it? Telephone company. And my father, my grandfather worked for the telephone company. So there was a homage to him and Target, right on Target with last call. And James Bond was always a good shot. So all those little plays on words. Uh, another good thing is a good choice is a good cocktail, good cocktail on ice. Again, this was the gallery, uh, Isabel, you know, you should paint ice. I'm like, Why the hell would I want to paint ice? Well, you'd be good. It would be good practice for you. And just the way that wax works with, to make the ice. And I'm like, all right. And sure enough, she was right again. Uh, I totally fell in love with painting ice and painting liquids. And I did a bunch of cocktails and I still do a bunch of cocktails like this, you know, the little, the little ringlets of water on top of the glass and you can get totally lost in the ice. And when you get close to it, she, she always told me like, your paintings look like crap when you really get close to them because they're nothing but a mess. But you really have to walk back until you actually see what it is. And I do like that surprise and that aha moment of, oh, what is that? Here's a good dog. Here's my dog, Giorgio, against George Washington. And it's called George Giorgio. And uh, the word, the portrait is from the portrait gallery in Washington, D.C. So really simple stuff but really fun stuff more for me to learn how to paint um george washington i did in egg tempera and giorgio i did in encaustic paint so just love again loving the hair here's one that i did uh poo and picasso back in 1997 this was my first dog and then i revisited the same painting in 2010 uh, quite fun going back and seeing, uh, thankfully, how much better I am. Hopefully, how much better I am controlling the wax and what becomes more important. For this, more important is the technique and being able to paint the Guernica. Sorry, here. Cool cash cow. Got Ben Franklin in the back there with uh, Lucky Charms. And uh, as a logo, then I started adding dots to my work. And then this became one of the things that I wanted to add into my paintings was dots. So I did birds, added dots. This is the Wonder Bread logo with dots, added dots as a visual uh, imagery, and then added the word dots that were in dots. And uh, again, falling in love with the reflections of encaustic in the car, playing with dots and dots, starting to build my own vocabulary now that I can use dots as kind of, you know, without saying egotistical, like, oh, that's a Jeff Scheller. It's got dots in it. So dots become part of my vocabulary. Dots and women. This is one of my newer pieces, dots. Um, and this is an acrylic painting. And this is one of my most recent paintings, painting dots over images. A uh, little nod. I found out that um, Baldessari was doing this also, but he was covering up people's eyes and stuff with that. Um, and this is all in uh, acrylic. So through all of that, that takes us forward. And uh, I like to say art is a journey and it's not a destination. As you can see, is you think that nothing really makes sense as you look back at it, but it's all these small little baby steps playing Clark on Superman, you know, Clark Kent, 
Clark Bar. <laughs> Milky Way, this was the Star Wars in a far, far, far away galaxy. And where's the Milky Way? The Milky Way is in front, and you are here. So you're somewhere between a galaxy far, far, far away and then the Milky Way. Painting lobsters. And recently, it's just been a bunch of commissions that I've been doing. Uh, this is a commission for a pasta shop. This is a commission for uh, burger rental properties. Um, they own a bunch of rental properties and they need some for their new office. Again, a little play on words. What's the best thing for a rental company? Two aces and three kings is a full house. So every <laughs> rental company wants to have a full house. <laughs> So here we are. Life is good. I got three kids. I got my dog. I got my studio, which is 100 yards away from my house. And here is a view walking down to the studio every morning. Jeez. And here I am down in the studio. This is me. I built the studio before uh, the GoFundMe site started forming. I went out, asked 10 collectors if they'd like to pre-buy a painting so I could raise capital for my studio. And oh, cool. uh, they all pre-bought a painting. And I raised uh, a bunch of capital for my studio. And then I gave them a painting the following year. Wow. And this is my biggest vacation. This is the door outside of my studio. So <laughs> the summer, the kids, everybody's out there. I got a bar over there, and uh, I really like to visit it, but it keeps me in the studio. Here's a little bit of my palette with the encaustic, all of my natural pigments. And now the exciting part. How the heck did I do all of this, right? It, what, I quit my job on my third kid. We, my wife was pregnant. I went in for my annual review. I was working for a website company. We were doing the websites for the um, Port Authority of New Jersey, New York, World Trade Center. And he's like, all right, I want you to learn CSS and DHTML and JavaScript and all these things are like way above your head in my head. And I'm like, he's like, so what do you want to do first? And I'm like, I really want to paint. And as I said that, and it came out of my mouth, I was like, holy crap, I'm leaving. And I only worked there three days a week and two days I painted. And I was kind of like, so yeah, you're probably gonna have to find somebody else, but my wife's pregnant. Can I still be on the insurance? So I had Cobra for the next three months and uh, freelance for them. And I haven't looked back since. So wow. .com Inc. My career basically is I'm a CEO. I'm VP of business, I'm an accountant, I'm a gallery liaison, I'm an artist, a designer, a showmaster, and a webmaster. And I have to take care of my property, that I'm a janitor, a landscaper, and basically everything else that nobody wants to do. And it all started with act locally. I found a local gallery. It was Westchester, it was the Bodice Gallery. I don't know if anybody's familiar with that. That's about, oof. 15, 20 years, 20 years ago, 15 years ago. And I did Immaculata College. They did, they had their art show. I did Yellow Springs. Yellow Springs ended up not having me back. I've been doing the Melbourne Retreat Show. Act locally, build up your local following, and then go out and find other galleries. So then I went to Boston. I went to Boston. Boston said, you got to raise your prices. They came back to Westchester. I said, my prices have to go up. It's like, we can't, we can't do that. You know, you've been selling really well. I'm like, well, they're selling in Boston. From Boston, I went to San Francisco. San Francisco raised my prices. And then I went back to Boston. I said, okay, my prices are going to have to go up. Then I went to Switzerland, and my prices went up. And then I brought my prices up in San Francisco. Because all of these galleries that I found that were better, not, I can't say better, more established, sold at a higher price and then I could go back to all the other galleries and say, hey, my work is selling for this. Let's bring up our prices. So the prices came up across the whole entire board and they are the same now through every gallery, through every show, through every open studio. Wherever you come, my prices are straight up the same 
by size. Keep it easy, keep it simple. Um, also blessed with the idea of being able to work with Iron Hill um, Brewery and Restaurant, and I did their murals for them. This is the one in Westchester. Currently, they have 20 locations, and I am working on all their locations, and I did some beer labels for them and uh, helped them market and design some of their beers. How did this all happen? Basically, you have one chance to make a good impression and choose wildly. I, bas I basically say yes to possibly every opportunity. You never know who you're going to meet, where you're going to be, or what's going to happen. All I got is time. Might as well fill it, sharing my experience, sharing my art. I was at Rittenhouse Park in the middle, in the summer, doing an outdoor art show. And the architect for Iron Hill walked by and said, wow, we could see your work in Iron Hill. Do you do murals? Little white lie, but yeah, sure. It's just really a bigger painting, right? It's a painting <laughs> that's on a wall. I paint, not a problem. And he's like, we're going to do the one in Wellington. Um, reach out to the um, liaison, Sue, that does um, all the marketing and the branding. So I reached out to her and I said, hey, I was told to contact you. You're looking for something for a mural. She's like, well, we're still building. We're under construction. Give me a call in a month. So back then I had my Franklin planner put call Sue in one month. Called her, said, hey, how's it going? Well, if you know anything about construction, it doesn't really go so smoothly. She's like, call me back in a couple of weeks. Sure enough, call her back in a couple of weeks. And basically my tenacity and stubbornness and stupidity landed me the gig. And she's like, okay, let's see what you got. And I made some images for him. And I've been with him for the past 20 years. Um, <laughs> this, is, this is another great story of how I'm the first place loser. This is Burke Street Station. Uh, they did a call for proposal. And it was a huge project. It was 1% program that they were looking for murals for Burke Street Station. Um, it was a project that was way too big for me. Um, and I came, we had to do a presentation. I came up runner up. I was first, first last place. If the people that did it before me couldn't accomplish it and couldn't go through all the engineering and jump through all the hoops, I would be picked. Well, Lo and behold, three years later, the engineer wasn't approving this other person's design. They reached out to me, said, hey, do you want the project? I was like, sure. It's just another big mural, right? How hard is it to work with union contractors in Philadelphia? Not a problem. Again, I learned a real lot from this project. Um, then I started doing a lot more corporate stuff. This is for a sign company in um, Westchester. This is um, Rehoboth uh, Fish On. They commissioned me to do all of their artwork in the restaurants down there. This is Temple University um, at the old train station, the Temple University Healthcare. Um, work with our consultants, and this is all digital photographs using Photoshop and blowing them up. It's a big murals. This is Exton Mall uh, with Mainline Health. They wanted me to design the exterior of Mainline Health. And I did all these stuff, printing on plexiglass and on wood. Hmm. Here's some of the other stuff from, if you have never been to Exton Mall. So act locally, think globally. With the internet, there's so many opportunities out there. Apply to different things. There's so many. Uh, and now with Zoom, you don't have to show up to things. No offense, but you know, you sit near a studio and talk to people around the world. One of the claims to fame that basically came back to life 25 years later was Friends. That's my painting on the last episode. And it was on Oprah. So if anything, even my China experience. Don't worry about stealing your ideas. If your ideas are any good, you'll have to ram them down people's throats. Repetition, repetition, repetition. Just get your stuff out there. If you're worried about people taking your images from the website, you know, 
they're too small to reproduce, don't worry about it. If they're good enough, they'll come, they'll find you, and they'll reproduce. Isn't that one of the things like uh, imagery, sincere sort of flattery? You know, so once they start copying you. So brings us up to 2008. We remember uh, the crash, the first crash, the housing market. My gallery started closing. I had 12 galleries throughout the United States. Mm -hmm. They started closing. Uh, I focused and said, wait, where am I selling most of my work? I'm selling a lot of it locally. I have to go back. I lost a lot of my local connections. I wasn't doing any um, local shows anymore because I was shown galleries. I wasn't doing any outdoor shows. Um, that's basically another story because we had my third, no, second child. And we were at Mount Gretna and she was three days old. And I dragged my wife and my newborn to Mount Gretna and it was hot. And Mia's crying and my wife is like, we are never doing this again. You better find <laughs> another career. So I said, hey, let's go to galleries. Galleries serve wine and cheese. We don't have to deal with the elements. Um, so I did the whole gallery career. And fast forward, um, I started the studio tour thinking that it was going to help me and help other artists. Lo and behold, uh, 12 years later, I am an event planner. I know Excel. I know web page design after that I got out of. And I took all of my knowledge and all of the surveys from the past 12 years from artists and combined that to make the studio tour and help artists be awesome. The biggest problem that I hear here are artists are, you know, nobody, nobody likes my work. I can't sell my work. Um, you know, the, the community doesn't accept my work. And then I'm like, I have to go back and help artists find their market. There's a market out there. You just have to find it. And I started out with 25 artists and 12 studios through Chester County. And now we divide the county up into two segments with 57, 50, 53, 56 studios this year and uh it's a full weekend we print catalogs eight thousand catalogs people actually use them and uh I'm, I'm really proud of all the artists that have helped me develop this and make it into a huge weekend we give out the signs put up the banners and people come now i'm like into technology and making it more user-friendly. First, it was trying to figure help the artists, get the artists set up, help them sell artwork. And then now I have to make it better for the user and make a better user experience. So with the help, help of technology, we can find the five closest studios to you and you can go visit and make a day out of it. We're recognized in Philadelphia Inquirer. We've made some great... Um, community outreach programs and a lot of sponsors and this is how I end it